named Claire. I believe Claire's been working on this wedding speech for many years, so which Adam's apparently quite worried about, so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing what Claire has to say. Hey everyone, my name is Claire, and for the past 10 years I've been calling Anna my best friend. Anna, however, more often refers to me as her car park friend. This is because all good friendships have an awesome origin story, and Anna and Anna's story started in a car park. So it was the year 2004, Anna and I were doing the HSC, and being the diligent nerds that we are, we'd gone on an HSC study camp. Now on the last day of the camp, everyone else's parents had come to pick them up and Anna and I were actually left there waiting for our lifts. The two of us in a completely empty car park, waiting. And I was a little nervous, but Anna came and she slid next to me and she started talking. And I was really excited that this really exciting, fun girl had started talking to me and right then I knew that I wanted to be her friend. Anna was not so convinced. <laughs> About nine months later, we were still friends, thankfully. About nine months. Nine months later, we were still friends, and we'd started uni, and we'd started hanging out um, after uni hours in Manly with our friend Nick Kitching, who is, was standing there and was going to wave. Anyway, um, there we go, yeah, Nick Kitching. And the three of us had been hanging out in Manly, and Anna had done something, typically Anna, that is, she'd done something really silly and really awkward. I burst out laughing. And I said, I am so saying that at your 21st. And Anna looked at me with a dead pan face and said, you don't know you're giving a speech at my 21st. You don't even know we'll still be friends when we're 21. <laughs> well, I did give a speech at your 21st. And now I'm giving a speech at your wedding. <laughs> our friendship with one word, one word to describe it, it would be adventurous. We've had many adventures from sitting late night in Anna's car with the um, chairs wound right back, lying back, looking at the ceiling with the falling off fabric. I don't know if you've been in Anna's car. Move it lie down and look at fabric and talk about the deep, meaningful things in life. We have the exploits of the singles club, details on request. Um, we, once Anna came into one of my engineering lectures, because she refused to believe that I was the only girl studying engineering, she came in and while we were sitting in the lecture theatre, she whispered, everyone's staring at me. And I said, that's because you're the only other girl in the room besides me. <laughs> we also had, oh, our, our experiences and our ventures have changed a bit recently. Um, we're now focusing on how much sushi we can eat in one sitting before we hate ourselves. <laughs> um, and of course, I have my own little side adventures. Um, one of my personal favourite things to do as a sort of like sub-adventure to our normal adventures is to see how many times I can make Anna feel awkward in a conversation so that she does her squealy badger face, which looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant ways of achieving this are through touching her feet, although I don't recommend doing that very often, through uh, saying milk instead of milk, which she hates, and my personal favourite, mentioning sex. <laughs> oh yeah! Now, tonight, you're going to hear heaps and heaps of different origin stories for these guys. You're going to, you've already heard a reference to the umbrella story. There's the case of the mistaken identities between Annas, um, among many other stories of how these two got together. But the moment that I knew that Anna and Aaron were meant to be together was quite early on, when Anna said the two of them had had a romantic walk along the um, harbour front in Sydney. And when she said this to me, I went, she has found her new adventuring partner. She has found the guy that she is now going to go and do her adventuring with. And it was really, really exciting. But this is the one thing that I really need to say to you guys tonight. You now, as you go adventuring, are going to have to do battles. So you picture, like, whenever you hear an adventuring story, you always end up having, you know, the dragons and the oaks, or, or whatever the, you know those things, the ugly things, and the trolls, and you come up and you have to have these massive battles and fight. Well, you guys now, you're going to be fighting for your marriage. Things and people are going to come up, and they're going to try and cause trouble, and it's your responsibility to fight for each other and fight for this marriage. And all of us who were there at the wedding yesterday, we're witnesses and we are now responsible for fighting for them as well. When 
we think of ourselves in relation to these guys, we should picture ourselves as like knights with metaphorical swords, fighting and fighting for these guys in every way. And so I wanted to finish the speech tonight by saying, my promise to you guys is, I'm going to fight for your marriage and I'm going to fight for you guys. of Aronets, um, Ben. So Ben went to primary school, high school, uni, and worked at the same place as Aronet, and then they shared a bachelor pad in Paddington and Aronet. So <laughs> I'm quite honestly surprised that we're not at the wedding reception for Ben and Aronet tonight. Here we go, Ben. I am all joined tonight, tonight to be celebrating the marriage of um, my dear friend Aaron to the most lovely Anna. Now, Aaron was a kid that knew that he never took off his Crestwood Primary School jumper, <laughs> even if it was 40 degrees outside. <laughs> Aaron, not too long ago, you were drinking cheap tequila directly from the bottle, celebrating music. <laughs> <laughs> How times have changed. He's now looking absolutely spiffy in his suit. And, uh, we're drinking actual uh, good wine and alcohol from proper glassware. <laughs> now, we all know that Aaron is smart, funny, and true and genuine. But occasionally, in some instances, I think, uh, which I'll share with you tonight, a bit more foresight and planning will have avoided some tricky situations. The foremost that comes to mind is on his first job after uni. <laughs> uh, he was signed by his client, a lingerie company, to visit <laughs> women's underwear sections throughout across Sydney. <laughs> now, Aaron somehow decided the best way to do so was by himself. <laughs> wearing, wearing a hoodie. Not only that, but he was he stuffed his pocket his, his hands in his pockets. <laughs> now, suffice to say, it wasn't before too long that he was actually escorted out of the store. <laughs> <as a man. laughs> but he's a determined guy, so you know, he got the job done in the end. But it gives me great relief that in the future you're you're keeping this Anna's help uh, for, for any any such task. <laughs> <laughs> and it can also be a little bit underprepared at times. I remember for Oxen Trail Walker. <laughs> it's, now, Oxen Trail Walker, for those that don't know, is a 100 kilometer hike, so it's no easy task. Now, while the rest of the team was like gearing up in compression gear, you know, uh, push dry tops and you know, waterproof jackets. Aaron will be showing up in his Mr. Man t-shirts. <laughs> so again, it was no surprise that uh, on a particular training hike, he started pouring down. His $2 poncho failed, <laughs> and he was left soaking wet. But he's a persistent guy, so you know, uh, he never gave up. He did the hike, and not only that, he was the best fundraiser in our team. <laughs> When the client came to Anna though, he didn't want to make the same mistakes. <laughs> so, after a few days, and he wanted to turn the friendship to our relationship. <laughs> uh, with his first kiss, basically, he wanted to be well prepared. So he got some expert advice. Of course, this was from his female friends. He knew better than to ask the guys this question. <laughs> so, armed with their advice, he, took a, he had a romantic dinner, a stroll by the water that, <laughs> that Claire referred to earlier. Went until the moment was right, and pulled it off, right? <laughs> this is a fairy tale, right? This only happens to Aaron and Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew the relationship was a little bit, it was getting serious when observing a few traits of Aaron's grooming habits. Now, Aaron, from time to time, as you know, can look for a better word, for lack of a better word, like a hobo. <laughs> you don't let go a little bit, I don't know what the hell goes on here, but you know. So 
so it was interesting. I was living with a guy at the time, so interesting to see that uh, it was a sustained period. It was quite well maintained and clean shaven. <laughs> so this I never thought was when he was dating uh, Anna. About a year ago, though, he did he did come back from uh, some time with Anna, and again I don't know what was going on here. It was like completely like uh, he looked completely. Uh, Mangy in some respects, <laughs> but then I realized that Aaron felt comfortable being himself around Aaron now. Aaron had settled him for who he really was. <laughs> so I truly do look forward to hearing about the future of building together, and I'm very honored to be part of it here tonight. <laughs> Thank you.